Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, which goes by the name Real-Time Daily Trading Ideas. This is our internationally oriented webinar addressed to traders all over the world. We will be speaking about trading ideas, strategies, market screenings, and we'll be answering your questions. At this point, I would like to introduce myself to the audience. My name is Alex Raftopoulos and I'm a new employee of Admiral Markets in Berlin. Before we can start with the actual webinar, we will briefly present the risk disclaimer. Trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carries a high level of risk, which is not suitable for all investors due to its complex nature. Please make yourself familiar with these instruments by using a demo account, if you are a starter. Please feel free to contact us if you need any assistance with that. Please also note that none of this is investment advice. The statements made in this webinar only represent the personal opinion of our traders. You can also find the whole risk claim on our website. Here you can see the schedule for the week. Today there is a small change. Jens is going to replace Jay. And before I finish off with the introduction, I would like to, to invite everyone interested in trading to try us out and benefit from the best index and forex offerings with spreads of just 0 0.8 pips. Please feel free to have a look around our website and explore our international activities and do not hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. Well, enough of me for the moment, now it's Jens' turn. Good morning Jens, what's your outlook of the market for the moment? Yeah, hello, and um, I welcome you here um, uh, at uh, today's Real Daily Trading Ideas. Um, one second, let me just share my screen. There we go. So now you should you should see it. That's that's me. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy to be here today, uh, and um, like to present you some some thoughts on uh, on my view on the markets today. Uh, in fact, over the weekend, something interesting happened with the um, EU summit here, EU Brexit summit, we have to call it, um, and uh, there was uh, a final agreement between the EU and the uh, UK in terms of an agreement, a Brexit deal. The interesting thing about this is, or in fact, it's not really interesting because the thing is that one should or could expect um, the... Um, agreement to be signed by both parties uh, and uh, so far it seems as um, especially when looking for example at, at JPY um, you can see an order here and I want to start with JPY but nevertheless give an outlook on, on the DAX too by the way uh, so it's very interesting to see that there's some kind of of uh, risk um, um, of um uh, of a risk on mode so <laughs> so uh jay will be back uh, i think next week onwards i think he is uh um um i think he's on vacation i think he's on vacation i am not really sure but uh it's only that uh today that i replace him so uh no need to worry so is jay still with with admiral and will present his thoughts in the future um and uh so let's come back to 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 the risk on mode um so markets are obviously happy to hear about this uh, agreement between the EU and um, and UK. This is, by the way, the only only real reason you can you can or we we can see currently um, so this this risk on environment. Um, there's no yeah the economic docket in fact is very thin today. So when looking here at the website from Admiral Markets AdmiralMarkets.com, you can go to analytics there the trader. Traders block. This is where you can find the weekly piece and weekly outlook. We can have a look at this too. By the way, it was published several minutes ago. But here at the forex calendar, um, uh, you can see that when scrolling down, um, and this is the G8 uh, FX universe, you can see um, that it's very very thin. In fact, one thing which is probably of interest here is uh, the speech from Mario Draghi in uh, front of the. Um, uh, EU Parliament in uh, Brussels at uh, 2 p.m. London time. It would be really interesting if there are some some thoughts, some questions, some mentionings from Draghi himself in regards to this uh, to this agreement, which was um, um, found then here between the EU and and uh, UK. Um, if it affects in some way, or if he thinks it affects in some way um, the uh, um, European economy 
or the, the what 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 um, um, tensions could arise, in, especially in terms of trade between between the EU and UK. Probably this will um, uh, get us some some volatility. But all in all, from this perspective, um, we can well, we have to say that that the economic docket is very thin today. And uh, so the thing is that. Obviously, this agreement is is the first driver. Nevertheless, skepticism is something to keep in mind around this. Therefore, I've prepared um, uh, a website here from the Independent. It's a it's a, a British UK newspaper, in fact. And um, I think this first sentence here um, gets the job done. Uh, why skepticism is something um, to keep in mind when looking at this agreement here. The Prime Minister says this is the best deal possible. It's not just Theresa May as a Prime Minister saying that, but also I think it was Jean-Claude Juncker saying the same. Um, and she will make the case to Parliament and to the public. The, the, the very interesting thing about this is if this is the best deal possible, um, there's lots of potential now for the UK Parliament to just uh, say no. Because then um, Theresa May has uh, two options, renegotiate anything, exactly. Uh, Bob is already uh, pointing this out here in the chat box. It has no chance of success. And this is exactly what I think uh, too, by the way, and many others, by the way, too. Um, so it's it's really no real chance that this will go through uh, the UK parliament. So um, it has to be renegotiated um, to, to some extent and in favor of the UK. And uh, this potential tension arising from it um, is really, or when looking at the markets, then it's, it's really surprising to see uh, in this case, for example, JPY being sold, clear sign of risk on mode, respectively, the DAX then here. Um, and therefore, let's have a look at the hourly chart. And I have to, by the way, zoom out a little. Uh, and there you can see it. We already made it above or back above 11,300 points, and the DAX here can stabilize um, above 11,300 with no real problems, which is a clear sign of a potential risk on mode and potential drive again is the Brexit. Nevertheless, the sustainability of this move is definitely something uh, to keep in mind. And um, why do I say that? Well, if someone is aggressively buying this current strength here, um, I think it's a good idea to go long today, to be long, and 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 to expect probably further gains to happen. Probably a, another push higher, up to eleven thousand four hundred points. Yes, but nevertheless, um, this potential of the UK Parliament saying no to this uh, deal, um, which was um, 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 worked out there between the EU and um, and and UK and Theresa May in this case, is something to keep in mind and watch closely. Uh, since every escalation now around this topic is capable of uh, driving markets aggressively lower than again. JPY higher in this case. But nevertheless, first of all, when this is why we're talking about real daily trading ideas, today, um, the momentum is seen, can be seen, can be found on the upside. So long setups in equities are to be favored, in my opinion. And also, and this is one of the reasons why I'm, yeah, not happy, but it's, it, in fact, it's a system trade. So um, why you can find a long um, setup here, where I think um, we have probably some 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 good potential on the upside if it's finally triggered. Um, I think this this uh, current momentum will likely continue uh, on the upside then, meaning that your JPY has a good chance to 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 be pushed higher. This is the only or this is the fundamental reason. The technical side is very simple too. So we look here at the um, Asia trading range between uh, 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. German time. So it's uh, 2 to 9 a.m. Uh, London in this case. And um, then the setup says, if we're trading above this purple line, we're going long, um, while when we're, or we, we only trade breaks of this range on the upside, while if we fall below this this, this purple line, we only take short engagements. Um, in this case, obviously, we're trading above that, and so we have a buy stop placed here, and if it's, or if we break out on the upside, we'll have a long trade. The unfortunate thing about the current market environment is, look at this, um, so we're talking about the breakout approach and the current market environment is the complete difference of being favorable for such breakout setups. We have seen plenty of potential fake outs on the up, respectively on the downside. Uh, market does not really take on further momentum. On the other hand, 
it's a systems rate, and so we have to take it because now the thing is, um, there is a good chance for further gains um, once the market takes out the highs of this range here on the upside, and um, then probably we'll see at least minimum another um, um, 1R on the upside, so just a duplication of this range then, and probably if the market continues to push higher and there's enough momentum taking on, probably based on comments from Mari Draghi saying, uh, we think there will be a deal and this potentially favors a more restrictive monetary policy path in 2019 and yeah, be sure that there will be discussions around rate hikes um, from Q, no, not Q, H, H2 2019 onwards. I think this is very unlikely, what I just presented here, um, uh, and, and, and these thoughts, uh, or the, the Mario Draghi hearing this, um, or I'm saying in front of the uh, UK, no, EU parliament today, but nevertheless, if this really happens, this could trigger some bullish action here. While we just do not know if this will happen or not, we just go with the trade. Um, and we're with the setup here without a discretionary intervening in some way, only um, yeah, hoping that exactly this will play out then in this case. And hopefully, if this trade is triggered on the upside, um, we have a good chance then uh, to, to see some, some yeah, positive gains for this, for this approach. Um, I've written it down, by the way. So one second, please. Let me just, let me just open a document here. So here are the input parameters. And let me just enlarge this a little so that you have a chance here. So it's the Asia breakout. The range um, is today between 128.24 to 128.91. Um, the system says we go long if we trade above the EMA, uh, exponential moving average 11 in this case. So that's why we have an entry long here. It would be, by the way, um, that's probably a question which arises now. What happens if we now drop below this this, this purple line in the next uh, hours? Um, this means that the setup switches um, to then the short side, which I, in fact, do, do not favor um, at all. And I, I just hope that if we are getting tri triggered within the next hours of trading, then that will be triggered on the upside based on all these thoughts presented. Nevertheless, I if 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 this happens, I would have to take the short trade then in this case. Um, but let's now focus on, on the current long setup. So entry long, 129.91. We have the stop then placed at the low of the range, 128.24. The risk is 67 pips. And now the interesting part, um, some of you might wonder um, what target are we working with? And you have already seen that we placed a take profit level here on the upside. Um, that's a purely statistical one. So it has nothing to do with um, 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 trade uh, or, or, or um, not, not market research, but uh, a chart um, analysis or something like that. Um, you just found out over the years when back testing this approach, um, you, you found out that um, it works best with the risk reward of 1 to 1.8, uh, 1 1.7. Um, and uh, therefore, you just do the following. You have the risk here. You multiply those 67 pips with 1.7. You get 114. And this is what you add on top of this range then here, um, meaning that you're working with a target of 130.05, um, resulting in a risk reward of 1 to 1.7. Um, and then we go from there. So in fact, that's uh, that's that's uh, nothing real spectacular. This is the setup for today. Um, for oh, I'm sorry, uh, for the for the FX market then, and we have to to wait till this setup is triggered. Now, um, nevertheless, we also want to have a final look here at the DAX and and what could potentially happen. Something you can't really see here, but something I'd like to point out is the following. Um, we opened above the highs from last Friday, quite significantly, in fact. Um, so there was uh, the, the high that could be found, the, the, the high could be found on Friday around 11,200 points. And on a five minute chart, probably you can see it probably even better. So that was the closing price. Here's the high from Friday. And um, everything what happened here from, uh, in this case, um, um, uh, 12 a.m. German time in this case, um, didn't really take place, but this is an overnight indication. The interesting thing now is that this overnight trading does not or did not take place um, or market participants trading, for example, the future DAX just do not see this, which means 
um, that you have something we call a true gap. So what, what is the differentiation between a true gap and an untrue gap? Therefore, let me just um, illustrate this here in a quick quick manner. So if you have a structure of this here, and there is the closing price, and then the market opens here. This is the open of the next day, and probably the market then keeps on, on moving higher. The interesting thing is that once the market opens above, respectively below. So in this case, we are talking about an up gap, but you can um, duplicate this idea to the downside here too. If you open above the highs of the day before and out of the trading range of the day before, we are talking about a true gap. The gap is closed once the market pushes down to these highs on the downside. So this, this would be a gap close then. Um, there's also another way of, of saying um, we have a gap. In this case, we have a trading range like this. So here's the closing price. And the next day, we open here. Um, now the interesting thing is that there is often, um, obviously, there's a, there's a difference between the closing price and the opening price of the day. And this is something while we are opening within the trading range of the day before, what we refer to as an untrue gap. So in fact, in my trading, untrue gaps do not play a role, but what I look at are true gaps. So today is, in fact, an interesting day um, from, a, from a gap perspective. And now the question um, um, arises, at least in my mind, I wonder, probably will we make it to the highs from, from Friday and close this gap or not? The thing is, that so far and after the price action so far, especially here with the DAX now after um, the 8 a.m. opening took place at the FDAX, UREX in this case, so this is where the future DAX is traded, um, after not making any or taking on any momentum on the downside, trying to close this gap, but in, in fact, just pushing higher, this is a clear sign that there's no real willingness of, um, uh, of, of market participants to close this gap. Let's, let's call it that. Um, um, and, and with this in mind, and, and when looking here at this, at this structure, this is something I'd consider to be a bullish sign. So also from a pure technical perspective, um, taking out everything uh, related to the Brexit and potential um, um, risk on drivers we find there and everything. Um, I think this is also a, cl a clear sign of strength here. And if we are now not making it um, below this purple line here in this case, so this is the um, exponential moving average 50 on a five minute time frame. If we are not dropping below this level, um, the intraday advantage stays on the long side and every pullback to this line is potentially um, a long trigger from which we then start another attempt to go up to probably 11,400 points. So this means that every pullback to this level now, which means 11,305 to 11,310 points here, is something uh, to keep in mind. And probably then going long from here with uh, the target to anticipate a break higher above 11,300. Yeah, it's, it, let's let's make a round number out of it. It's 360 then. It's the current daily highs here in the DAX, and then trying to take these uh, this level out and and push higher to 11,400 on the upside. Um, which indicator is the purple line? The purple line is the exponential moving average uh, 50. So that means you can here click on. Uh, oh, this is German. It's Einfügen. It's uh, include or what? What's the English? Uh, English reading here. So insert. It's, 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 it's insert. Insert. Exactly. Yes. Thank you very much. No worries. Yeah. So, um, so it's insert, and then you get go on indicators, and there you have the trend here, or tendency trend. Yeah. Um, and there you have the moving average, and if you click on moving average, there you have the period. It's fifty, and then you have to to change this here, by the way, to uh, exponential. 50 in this case. So I'm not I'm not including it since it's already in. Um, but this is uh, what, what you can see here. Okay. Um, that's on the DAX. What do you, oh, there's something else. There's something else I'd like to, to, to say. Uh, something which which is probably of interest um, in terms of, of uh, the pound sterling in this case. You can clearly spot something here. Also a thought um, which you will find very 
similar in my uh, weekly outlook on the website from uh, Admiral Markets in the Traders Block section. Um, you can see that I'm still very skeptical around pound sterling, and I don't see pound sterling outperforming on the upside uh, over the next weeks, but in fact, um, based on all these potential tensions around the Brexit negotiations and everything, I think that chances are high uh, that, or it, it's more likely that we'll get to see a break here on the downside than on the upside. Um, now, the only thing is, this is something, it's not only me seeing that, but it's also the large speculators seeing that. So the commitment of traders report um, shows something here. You can see market participants, even though it's not a sentiment extreme, um, but large speculators are still skeptical around pound sterling, in this case, pound sterling future. Um, and uh, this skepticism is a very good indication on the overall outlook of um, uh, yeah, big market participants here and how they uh, view pound sterling in this case. So it's um, I'm on the side of the large speculators, let's say, but the thing is that with this in mind, every positive sign around the Brexit negotiations has the potential of a, of a sh so-called short squeeze. So pushing um, pound sterling higher than in this case. Um, and this is something to keep in mind and which is probably, uh, yeah, not so positive, let's say, for, for, for this outlook, even though, and this is something I consider to be positive then, um, nevertheless, um, it's, it's not a sentiment extreme, meaning market participants are, yeah, they, they are short, but in a, in a balanced way. It's not that they're aggressively short and betting aggressively on, um, on pound sterling to, to, to break lower. And this is something which is then probably playing out for, for my expectations here around pound sterling against the US dollar. Yes, exactly. That's correct. No, uh, oh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I probably see what the problem is. Yes, um, it's true what you what you say. It's the exponential moving average 50 on a five minute time frame, and it's in the exponential moving average EMA 11 on the one hour, but it's two different assets. So probably this was something, or it's, this is something I have to point out. So when looking here, probably this is better. Um, let me just add. Let me just add the asset we are looking at here. So this is the Dax 30 CFD five minutes. So it was another. Um, it was a, where is another asset we are looking at here. So this is the Dax 30 CFD five minute, um, and here I have as a let's call it trend filter the EMA 50, and when looking at Euro JPY. Um, Hourly, I'm looking at the EMA 11. So it's two different um, aggregations of the exponential moving average. It's not the same asset. So I hope that this is clear. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, and so in fact, that this, this, is, this is it from my end. Let's just see whether uh, such a push higher and the breakout on the upside will occur. Again, I wouldn't be really happy to see uh, the short side being triggered, but therefore it is necessary first that we push below the email 11 and then the setup switches and then we have to make lower lows in this case so breaking out of this range here on the downside um so based on everything what's happening currently in the market i i'd appreciate the breakout on the upside and hopefully get to see a follow through then on the upside and not just a fake out and then the market pushes back into the range yeah let's just see what the upcoming hours uh bring it bring them and um that's it from my end Thank you very much for your comprehensive analysis, Jens. Thanks to the audience for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. If you did and would like to review it, you can do so anytime. Just give us an hour or so to upload it onto YouTube. I'm wishing everyone a good day ahead and looking forward to the next webinar with you. Goodbye.